I know that you had a grant to try to find DNA in fossil dinosaurs. Yeah. You didn't find it. We have, we have tried many times. We have never found ancient DNA um, in any, anything more than just a few thousand years old. We did find protein. So we found pieces of protein. So. What do these protein tell us? Well, not really anything. I mean, it's, it's, you know, we were looking for DNA. We found proteins. You know, it's, it's worth a publication, but, but it doesn't, there's not much we can do with it. Okay. So the molecular approach to paleontology is just to study something that exists today, not that well, we, we don't know. Um, we are trying to set up an institute where, where we could study um, what we might call paleomolecular paleontology. I mean, it's you know molecular paleobiology. I don't know what you would call it, but but we don't know what we can discover until we try, until we look. You know, in science, the best questions are asked. The best question you can ask is what could be there um, rather than limiting yourself to a particular thing I'm gonna go find DNA or I'm interested in finding DNA the better question is what could possibly be there uh, every paleontologist has a passion for bones but yours maybe was a little bit different you didn't mind to break bones it's funny, um, you go to a museum and people treat dinosaur bones like treasures and they're very careful with them and it's like dinosaur eggs are the same thing. Dinosaur eggs, when people have them, are, are considered very precious and I always say, let me break it open and they're like, no, 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 don't break it open. And I say, but the most precious thing you could possibly have is an embryo inside. And the same thing goes for a bone. There's more information about the bone and the animal inside the bone than there is outside the bone. So you're better off to break it open and look. If you have a whole bone, you can compare it to other dinosaurs or other animals and see what they may have been able to do mechanically. In other words, they're biomechanics. Or we can compare them between different species to see you know, how they're different or how they're similar. Basically, it's morphology. But if you break it open, you get its histology. And the histology is a record of how that animal grew, how fast it grew, what its physiology was like, whether it was warm-blooded or cold-blooded. Um, your idea have often been controversial. Where do you think this attitude to think out of the box is coming from? Well, I am dyslexic. I, reading is the hardest thing that I do. And so, fortunately, I don't have a lot of other people's ideas. Ideas come from reading too much, I think. And so, so I would say that my thinking out of the box comes from never being in the box. My notion always has been that, this, that the best answer, the best questions out there are the simplest questions. And people get drawn up into the details of everything and, and, and forget that you know, we don't know a lot of the very basics of science. And you know, since I don't read, I don't know what the basics of science are, so I have to start from the beginning. <laughs>